I'm Christian Abbott. I'm Nathan Lavender. I'm Sean Abbott. And this is the Red Mist Podcast. Hello, welcome to the Red Mist Podcast, Season 2, Episode 6, the iconic Penske Blue, Sunoco-sponsored Chevrolet Camaro of Mark Donahue from the 1970 Trans Am season, and the number 6 AMC Javelin from the 1971-72 season, i.e. this is the Penske Racing episode. <laughs> On tonight's episode, we'll discuss... A thrilling race at the 12 hours of Bathurst. No kangaroos were harmed. We'll discuss the clash. Do we? At the Coliseum. Do we need to discuss that? Fortunately, we my eyeballs were not harmed by not watching that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, set a, I'll set a timer up on okay, that one. Yeah. That, that, gets that, one, that gets one, <laughs> minute, one yeah. minute of watching. Nate, Nate's our on-the-scene reporter for that. Yeah. We'll have some yeah. IndyCar preseason testing news from the Thermal Club. Some Formula 1 car launches. One that happened on our shores. And then we will discuss a little bit of sports car news. And let's just delve into the 12 hours of Bathurst. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Can we just dive into the clash? No. Can we get this done and over with? No. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Wait. Uh, Why do you want to save it? All right. You want to talk about it? Okay. All right. That's fine. We can. We can. We can. Nate, um, Christian's got a timer. How much time are you giving him? All right. Uh, get, oh, do, you, the, do what they do in the F1 on the... on. Well, um, the F1 well, see, TV show app. See, I'll, I'll give him a minute. I'll time That's him. That's all it needs. I'll time him, but then unfortunately, I'll have to pause it because it doesn't count caution laps. Do you, oh, do you no, want to talk about the heats? The that, heats then, as well? But then we have the. Um, do we need to talk about that? No, the heats? we don't need to talk about the qualifying <laughs> heats, Nate. Um, and we're not okay. going to talk about the six hour halftime show. This. This discussion of how long we need right. to, to talk is, about is this is more than what it should be. More right. than, oh, yeah. Is, yeah. 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 It, it's, well. it's probably taking about the same amount of time the race should have been. Nate, this was a 38-mile race. So, so Wiz Khalifa had more time in Nate, up front than... Nate, Nate, no one cares about Wiz Khalifa. I don't. I, I like Wiz Khalifa. He's talented in that. Yeah. But we're yeah, talking yeah. a 38-mile race that took four hours. All right. Four so hours. the four, four hours right. of is the, the Is the timer set? What are you giving them? Three for Dale. Three for Dale. Three yeah, for Dale. Three okay. for Dale. You're on the clock. All right. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. won. Uh, maybe because it's a horse. Who knows? But he won. Uh, and y- your podium, Austin Dillon. Uh, speaking and, of three for uh, Dale. Speaking of three for Dale. <laughs> so he moved Bubba Wallace out of the way, which, I mean, look, look out for that in the season, I guess. Uh, and a lot of drivers were complaining about uh, the car still not being up to par in terms of safety. If you back it up into a corner, you still feel uh, quite the hip check. And there was a lot of uh, going into the corner, trying to throw a guy into another guy. Uh, and Kyle Busch, <clears throat> Kyle Busch actually finished on the podium as well, because I mean, now they're trying to celebrate a podium style way at the end of the race. So Kyle Busch walked away with a uh, third place. And I look for him to have a really solid season in at Richard Children's Racing. Okay. And, uh, that, that's an, that, oh, we're that's talking. It? We're talking it? the clash here, Nate. Let's go. I know. Uh, okay. All right, all right. All right. So, if you were out in front, there was not a lot of um, time spent there because there was nine times out of ten you were going to get bumped out of the way, and that happened to a lot of drivers, including Bubba Wallace, who was leading a little bit. Eric Almarola got pole position there. Um, he didn't uh, last in the lead very long, and uh, it looked like it was it was either. Uh, kill or be killed um, kind of race and it, unfortunately there was a lot a lot a lot of cautions that were kept going out every like three laps there was a caution but uh, at the end of the day it was uh, Martin Truex Jr. who would uh, come out on top and uh, led 25 laps of the clash so he did have a, quite the uh, dominating performance of the drivers in the field uh, along with Ryan Priest who of Connecticut was actually looking really sharp um, 
he brings his uh, short track skills uh, from modifieds over uh, to Stuart Haas. So I think he's going to be some, someone to watch in the short tracks coming up this year. But he had a great showing. Uh, Danny Hamlin as well. Uh, Danny Hamlin even got moved uh, out of the way from uh, Bubba Wallace, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, but that really uh, concludes the clash, uh, if you're asking me. Uh, my homeboy, Brad Kozlowski, didn't even qualify for it, uh, which was devastating. And the weirdest part of this race, if you were in the last chance qualifier, they did not allow you to refuel. And there was a couple of cars, especially front row motorsports, who just ran out of gas with like six laps to go and were able to refuel and get back into the race, which I thought was kind of silly. But I guess that's the nice car for you. Daytona 500 is that much closer, so I can't wait. It's going to be good. I'm sure you guys are salivating over that. That was perfectly timed. It's perfectly uh, timed, Nate. Time Thank you. Now let's, I, let's I, move. Save, I save the listeners the... Uh, yeah, let's move to the a thrilling race over a 12-hour period yeah. that came down to a spread of 0.9 seconds, 0.9 of a second mm -hmm. between first and second with a third-place car, an additional 0.5 or half-second back, top three covered by one and a half seconds or just under, and we covered 12 hours on Mount Panorama, and we set a distance record in the race. Meanwhile, how far did they go? I don't know. How many kilometers, Christian? Uh, or how many miles? Give me a minute. I gotta look it up. Sorry, I, can do, I, can do I didn't have the second. exact mileage on that. I apologize. I just knew it was a thing. But uh, the the two things. One, no no kangaroos were injured this year. No uh That's no good. no wombats got on the course. Other furry Australian creatures. Not none of that. Um, actually, the incident level was extremely low, hence the reason they got the um, the distance record. Um, the winning team was the winning team from last year, the Sun Energy Mercedes AMG of Luca Stoltz, Jean-Marc Guillon, and Kenny Abul. We like Kenny Abul because he's down in NASCAR country in North Carolina, races in IMSA. Pirelli World Challenge here, probably the world in the World Challenge across the world, and he's dabbled in NASCAR a little bit. Distance, yes, especially at the road courses. That's right. Um, That's he's right. he's made a few starts at Watkins yep. Glen. Good, good gentleman driver. I think driver. Road America as well. Good gentleman driver. The uh, the the distance yeah. that was set in this race, they've they completed 314 laps around Mount Panorama, and uh, they covered 1,212 miles. And that equates to 50 kilometers short of 2,000 kilometers. It was absolutely a, so. It was an amazing race from the start. Uh, 1:30 p.m. here, which was about 5 5:30 in a.m. 5:30 a.m. on Sunday morning mm -hmm. at, at Mount Panorama. So they started in the dark. Um, it's kind of cool because when they start, the sun's coming up. Yeah. So catch every once in a while when they get to the top of the mountain, the sun's coming up a little bit, a little bit more. So mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. But that is a uh, – unlike uh, the previous weekend at Daytona, uh, with the pretty much the entire track is lit up. Yeah. Uh, Mount Panorama, <laughs> no no dice. Nope. <laughs> nope. I mean, it's, it's almost the inverse of what Sebring is. I mean, Sebring is a little bit more lit, but – uh, it's it's probably as close. The front straightaways on both are lit. But, yeah. But the one challenge to Mount Panorama, that I mean, Sebring has the darkness and the, the which makes the flatness hard. Yeah. Because you can't your reference points. But Mount Panorama in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I mean, where are the lights? <laughs> yeah. And, be and I mean, you're talking at that point. I don't even know how many cars started. Wasn't it like 30? 30 something cars started. I mean, 30 cars just going. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And the, it, it wasn't all GT3 cars. It no, was, there was some of the invitational cars from yeah. us that are within Australia that were there, uh, things like that. There was a KTM that was running. They had a problem. Then Audi came to their rescue mm -hmm. um, and we were able to get them, gave them a car to run. Um, uh, also marked the, I think on the GT stage, worldwide GT stage, uh, first time that the doctor, Valentino Rossi, mm. appeared. And yeah. first time at, ba at Mount Panorama, mm. 
and the doctor acquitted himself quite well. Um, he was driving with Augustus, Augusta Farfus and Maxi Martin. Um, no sludge of a team. No, no sludge of a team. Um, and they finished, uh, where did they finish? Hold on a second. 46 team. Yeah, they finished. Oh, they had, um, yeah, Farfus, Martin, and Rossi. They finished sixth, which was, which was really cool. Um, just behind, um, <laughs> this driving lineup, the triple eight Mercedes that had, uh, SVG, Shane Van Ginsbergen, his teammate from Supercars, Brock Feeney, <laughs> and Maxi Goats. I mean, like, Jesus, God. There was the, 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 the guys, like, that whole uh, first 10, just an amazing t- group of talented drivers. It was crazy, crazy. But um, I, I still can't. I can't believe the last two hours of the race. It was nip and tuck, nose to tail. Uh, the two Mercedes got into it in about hour and a hour and a half, hour and a quarter left. Um, got the Porsche back into it, so Matty Campbell drove his uh, usual fast self around the track, which he knows so well. And uh, Mauro Engel had to serve a penalty. Um, came back from that, and then um, got to within a half second of the Porsche. But he was setting of the top three in the last half of the race, last hour of the race. He was setting fast lap. Um, of the race consistently so it was it was amazing yeah. it was crazy and uh the guys in sun energy hats off to them though they to win it twice in a row is amazing and i believe john john guillon that that was his third in a row third in a row <laughs> at yeah. bathurst he joins an elite that is very that is great in the 12 hour 12 hour race yeah not the right. bathurst 1000 but the 12 Correct. hour yeah. 12 yeah. hour so that's pretty crazy. And I would say in that top group, a fair chunk of those guys were at Daytona. Yeah. And I think who won? Didn't Stoltz, did he win it? They, him and Engel were in the at same Daytona? car. Him and Engel were in the same yes. car at Daytona, yeah. and they won. Mm-hmm. They were in the um, the WeatherTech car. Yeah. So they won their class. Yeah. Oh, but they didn't win overall, that's- right? They didn't win overall in the class. They didn't win overall in GTD. No, they uh, won in G- GT they GD Pro. GD Pro because uh, Harder Racing, <laughs> yes. the Pro-Am yeah, yeah, yeah. car won, and then Magnus, yeah, <laughs> the other Pro-Am car finished third well, why, overall. Why do we, huh? Why do we talk what? about an overall GTD? Win? I don't know. Like, it, like it's because just, it's, two, every, it's two separate classes. It's everything. It doesn't yeah. Make so it. just you know, the only difference <laughs> yeah. is just play the driver thing, the driver time. That's all. No, but there's no award given for. No, it. I know. It, there were two winners though. It's, it's, there was it's GTD, not. It's no, not like it was GTD and GTD Pro. They both both winners got watches. Correct, but it's it's not like at at Le Mans where they. Or, sorry, Le Mans. I don't know why I pronounce it like that. Le Mans where they do the overall podium. So if like an LMP2 squeaks in there. Oh yeah. They do the the two top uh, yeah, prototypes yeah, yeah. and then the, the LMP2 yeah. and then they also do. Here's your LMP1 podium, your LMP2 right, podium. Right, right, and then yeah. The MG, like, I, like, that's that's, that's how they do it. Which yeah, I know, but it's all right. Anyways, so. It's I don't not, know, I it's think not like I, the, Honestly, in IMSA, they really don't need the pro the pro versus pro ant thing. Just adjust the drive time. So the John Potters of the world, in a two-hour and 45-minute race, they drive 45 minutes, and Andy Lather drives two hours. That's all you got to do. Yeah, I, I don't understand the difference in BOP. No, I mean, just I, take the BOP just, out and just, just change the drive just, time up. Just That's do all. the BOP based on the the pro cl- pro class. Pro class, if you, if and then you, just change, assuming. And then, sorry, assuming you have yeah, all of and the, then just the, just adjust the the pro am driver drive time. Yeah, you know. Anyways, anyways, that's, anyways, that's a different rant. Different, yeah. We're off topic. We'll save that for next se- next off season <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> already. <laughs> but yeah. um, the uh, qualifying, the top ten shootout. Mm. Wow, that was crazy. They were. Holland. Those guys are nuts. They really are. Yeah. They really they I, the supercar guys are nuts up there. Yeah. But I mean these guys in the GT three cars are nuts too. Mm. I mean this it was crazy when they were coming through. What do they call that? Um, down the hill there, um, off a of skyline, which is up top. They come into those those left right chicanes and then they head down. Is that McPhillamy the straightaway that goes down to the bottom of the hill, which is that's. Hold on. After the course group, the, the skyline you go down the S's through the dipper. The and dipper, then, yeah, the and then dipper. You get to, yeah, the dipper. The that's dipper, called, yeah. which is a tight left that opens, and you're either gonna put the you can definitely graze the wall on the inside, but on exit 
<laughs> oh, yeah, you can smack it, too. Oh, yeah. the guys are just crazy. Yeah. But then you head down Conrad Street. It's Conrad, right? Yeah. McFillin is the run, the run up, right? That's the run up, right? Uh, to the top. Not on this map. No, 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 no. Anyways, yeah, it's just unless, unless they change the name. This is this is just. Oh wait, hold on. Conrad's the that's the one the run down the run down Conrad that is <laughs> that is insane. Those guys are nuts. They should have um. Oh, one of the highlights was on, um, was it Friday or Saturday? Liam Lawson took the uh, the 2014 Red Bull out. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, that was cool. I kind of wish he kind of went for it on that last lap because I think he would have been under a mi- under two minutes. I know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think they I didn't want to. I think they were like, eh, let's not do this. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. he, he cooled yeah. it coming under the bridge, but he was hauling that lap. I know, yeah. Yeah, that, that third well, one, he, he, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing, yeah. yeah. It was crazy, though. And I'm sure everyone had their stopwatches. I don't know. It too. was still pretty cool watching a yeah. Formula 1 car. I mean, you could not have a Formula 1 race there. Mm-hmm. There is no way. Or IndyCar race. No, no, James no, 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 <laughs> no, no. You can't even, not even a prototype race. That is a GT, yeah. GT track only. Yeah. They did have a... Well, they had, for, what is it? Not the Formula Atlantic. Formula 5000s. No, Formula 4s. No, Formula 5000s. Yeah, 5, 5, and then yeah. they canned it because uh, the guys, <laughs> when they got to down oh, the end S5, of the... S5000. The S5000 series. When they got down the end of the Conrad Strait, their yeah. guys were launching over each other. No, no. But, like an but, the, race. Oh, but this this weekend, yeah. they did have Formula Ford races. Formula Ford, yeah. And yeah. they had some vintage um, cars running there, which yeah. was... Oof. The guy, some guy had a Nissan Skyline. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> oh, that thing! I think it. Had, I watched the that thing. That thing blew like blew. It was he, gone. It on was, the straightaways. Yeah, on the yeah. straightaways. It's like you hit the NOS button. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. The announce, the announcer is like, "How much power is it?" <laughs> the thing is, yeah. Jesus. And then the guy would catch him on the top part of the track, and yeah. then they would launch out down Conrad. And the thing would just launch away again. It was crazy. And then the guy stuffed it into the wall. But I don't know. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Good race, fun time. I, I, it's awesome too. Oh, it was amazing. Uh, watched it without uh, any ads, um, and uh, you mean commercial free? Commercial free, yeah. interrupted. Yeah, yeah. The only ad I had to do was every time when I went away from the race and shut it off and came back, I had to wait for YouTube to load up like a five second, you know, wow. two ads, like which is fine Which because that's YouTube. my entry fee into it. But um, yeah, I watched it for free, and uh, it was fantastic. Hmm. Had great yeah, coverage. NBC, I mean, uh, hmm. geez, no, the guys from RSL, along with the guys from, uh, I guess, Fox Seven in Australia, cover it. Yeah. So it was Richard Carrolls and Garth Tander. <laughs> Garth Tander's awesome. I love him. Yeah. And then they had, uh, then they, <laughs> and they, they would bring some of the some of the supercar guys in. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> Dave Reynolds is the best. <laughs> I love him. So, but it was cool. I I I, I enjoy that race. Um, now I gotta wait until. The end of the season for the Bathurst 1000, yeah. which is just as yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. Four, that's what, four, how many miles are they doing this thing? In this one? Yeah. They did uh, 1,212. Like, but I think the Bathurst, the Bathurst 1000, I think it's 1,000 kilometers. Kilometers. Yeah, so, sorry, they, they, they did almost 2,000 yeah. kilometers. Yeah, so. Well, that's almost a six-hour race. It's a six-hour race. It's about a five-hour yeah, race, yeah. yeah. It's crazy, though. Yeah. Because those things, that it's like running garage 56 mm. or actually it's actually run it's pretty close to running what they're going to be running in now Na- well the cars in nascar now because their gen 3 car is almost um it's similar to the current nascar cars i'm not going to speak on that point i don't know they, they're similar uh, they're probably a little it's... they're a little more advanced but it, they're similar i haven't looked at it so I'm, I'm, but anyways I'm not gonna it was it was yeah i I'll take I, it. I don't I'll, really I'll, have much. I'll, it's going to be, it's gonna be Chevy it. against Mustang. I it's gonna be, it's no, Mara versus that. Mustang. Yes. No. I, I get that. Because yeah. there's no Holden anymore. Right. Because GM, no, you can't have Holden. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Call the Camaro a Holden. Who cares? It's an iconic brand. Well, they got rid of uh, what is it, Pontiac and uh, Saturn. So I mean, I guess that's just on the line as well. <laughs> Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile. That's mm-hmm. right. Remember where you could win the Indy 500 and you win the Oldsmobile pace car? Yeah, and you, would, you, could, you, would could, know. you could go to an IMSA GT, IMSA Camel GT race, or an Exxon Supreme race, 
And in the GTS class, they would have the souped up Oldsmobiles, cutlasses <laughs> from yes. uh, Bricks Racing, and then they had them from Genelosi from Rocket Sports, and then they had them in uh, Trans Am, mm-hmm. and then uh, yeah, so look like an Oldsmobile. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to have Jenna Lozzi on this show? We should try. Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that that's um, <laughs> that that concludes. Uh, that's a two week, two weeks. That's wow. Two two fantastic finishes. One in Daytona with the um, LMP2, mm. and then this finish. So the uh, sports car season is off to a uh, thundering start. Yeah. So very excited about that. We got the prologue for wc and sebring 12 hours that's coming up yeah actually when does the elms season get kicked off uh it's after the prologue and all oh, that okay. all right so that so yeah next next up is is hypercar and gtp stuff down in sebring right they have a test session down there um just trying to get to something i wanted to chit chat about which was the indycar test at thermal daytona indycar what is i feel like i'm missing something huh connor daly oh oh okay yeah you want you can talk about that nate i need a second i gotta well load something i, I gotta tell you <clears throat> i i think it makes that much more interesting for qualifying because this is the 42nd entry in this race and that means two cars will be going home i mean they don't start, it's already a wait a really, minute, they don't start 43 cars no it's 40. they used to start 43 cars yeah well they can't even make 43 cars now so, so I mean, there's 42 cars that are entered yes what am i missing yeah. are they lowering the entries to just have a, a bump they, they've always they well not always but like I think for a few years now. What? Can, why, did, why does NASCAR have to have a gimmick for everything? I don't know why. It, 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 the first problem they have is the charters. That where thirty six well, cars are guaranteed a starting spot. That's, I think that's, that's you fine have, because that's sort of like the leader circle that's in IndyCar. I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem really. with that. Okay. I don't, I don't really have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is if it's forty. Three, if they can hold 43 cars, which traditionally they have, and 42 cars show up, you still got to have, you're only going to, like, two cars are going to go home. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's the charter system? It's, you buy the charter in, system is where, you, yeah, you, you can buy or lease a charter, and NASCAR gives it to select teams. And in this case, this year, it is, you. there are 36 guaranteed spots. So let's just say. You buy a charter, you guarantee a spot. Yes, or if you lease it to someone, yeah, then they get guaranteed that spot too. So let's just say Petty, which is Legacy, they have two charters. Say I don't know, they might have three. Mm-hmm. Who knows? They say they have three. They decide to lease one to Rick Ware Racing. Mm-hmm. That means the two Petty cars and the Rick Ware Racing car qualify for every race. But then that means the third. Petty or I'm just saying if there isn't a, if, which, there is, if there no, no, is, if I the, like the if, example if there wasn't a petty third car say they couldn't they couldn't get the money to run a third car they'll lease their charter out yeah it, it it's yeah it, but you but you've just explained a loophole though is if is if a team has three cars and they have and they have three charters but they lease a charter out to another team yeah that other team can get in but that's one of their cars like a lot of teams sometimes teams don't have the budget to run a third car so it's not right but what i what nate's saying is historically at the daytona 500 it's been 43 cars i I, I get that so now there's 42 cars well 42 cars get at indianapolis if you don't have 33 cars or you have 33 cars they all get in Mm -hmm. you know I I, right. I mean but I I don't I, understand why why it's just because they have just because just because forty two cars enter and then they decide oh it's, well two of you guys aren't going to qualify <laughs> like that's dumb yeah I, no, I, I agree I, 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 I agree, I agree with, with a lot of more than yeah. probably what you're thinking uh, but it, it, I just the, what I gotta say is it, it this list of drivers that are trying to wait, race their way in is really intense because. Even 
Yeah, I Nate, I, I you know, it's there. Yes, it's really cool that they're all racing their way in. They realistically, they're not gonna they're not gonna have a snowball's chance in hell in winning the race. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Johnson, <sighs> Zane Smith, Jimmy Johnson. I'll I'll I'll, 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 I'll all right. That that yes, but twist my arm, twist my arm. But, but the rest, I gotta then, I gotta anyways. say. Yeah. It's been anyways, a, it's been anyways. more than I want to talk about this, but anyways. Did you find what you're looking for? Close. Close. Okay. All right, all right. But there's two possible entries that could release something. Um, Team Hezeberg, who has entered Danny Gafia in a race before, they're still looking for possibly entering. And then NY Racing Team, which fielded Greg Biffle last year, could also do something. In terms of uh, entering a car into the 500 driver entry pool, it's so. exciting. Oh yeah! Can't wait. Oh yeah! Can't wait. Me too. I know. I know. Sean, I know you got it marked on your calendar. It's it's coming in, man. Oh, I I I, I don't really know what to tell you, Nate. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just. Not wetting my appetite. I got you. Anyways, Frank Kozowski's in it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. How long? Is, how long is he gonna last? Twenty yep. laps. Well, twenty laps. Well, oh, guys, you're I'm killing sorry, me. I'm sorry. Come I'm on. sorry. 120 laps. How long? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what laps are the uh, and... what are the laps of the stage cautions at? So I oh, make sure I, I know those are coming up. It was right. like 60, 60. So let's let's get on to spring training and D card. It was much more exciting. Yeah. Um. I, so yeah. I'll be honest. I didn't even watch crash any of it. I there was th- nothing I to watch. You couldn't <laughs> watch. There was no. They didn't. No, they, no. Didn't they didn't. No, I know. There was no video. No nothing. I mean, this was like ridiculous because it was one of the complaints. They had it at Thermal. It's a privately owned motor club. The yeah. folks at the track who own the right that own they the place yeah. own the place. Uh. They did not want any filming going on. Okay. So no live because apparently people would break into their houses, I guess. Okay. But they own they have their own private security force. <laughs> like that patrols the place. So you couldn't even do that. Wow. The track itself it's a club track. So it's like going to it's not Club Motorsports. Yeah, it's like Club Motorsports. It's like going to Palmer. It's not you know, no, it's I, fine for Club racing. It's not fine for IndyCar testing. I, I get that, but my my thing is, what does preseason for IndyCar really matter? Like well, it matters. It matters a lot because this is the first time the cars actually get on the track because they have a limited schedule. They don't. Have, no, no, no. I, I know it's limited. This is. Te- they, I know it's they, limited. One testing. more test day. That's it. Right. No, no. no I, I get it's limited testing, but it's not. But I get. I guess I'm just comparing it to F1. That's that's my problem. Because it, it's it's the same thing. F one they don't te- they have two no. days of tests in Barcelona, or Bahrain or right. whatever. Right, but but in F one you're unveiling a new car or a new generation yeah, well, with new designs. Was, where, whereas was, IndyCar, this is literally this was, just the same car. Yeah, I know, but it's new drivers, season. things like right. that. It's, so it's teams seat switch. Time. That's yeah, that's it's seat time. time. But I want to see it. New paint schemes. It's it's all that crap. I don't give a shit about the paint schemes. Well, I want to see the drivers. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'd like to well, see you. I'd like to see how these guys do, but. Honestly, I don't think that that track is like really that good for it. I mean, the more exciting thing of the whole weekend was that Simon Pagano took the Hoonigan Honda yeah. IndyCar engine out, went around the track. That was fine. I mean, they, you know, Kyle Kirkwood, nice job, finished on the top at the end of the session. He did well. Yeah, heard I led did two that. sessions. Um, you know. Yeah, but you don't know what what anyone else is running for a program. No, and everyone said the same thing. Like they was like no one knew what the gearing was half the time because they were trying to. Mi- they couldn't really get it on the sim. They couldn't really get the the thought of the gearing. So, so again, the results that are on there, uh, you just, just throw them out. Well, that's what everyone was saying. Like, why are we having it here? Why don't we go to a track that we run on? Uh, I. Where are you gonna go, Christian? There's no. They. I mean, where are you gonna go to Sonoma? That's like a snooze Seabring. fest. No, Sebring. Sebring. They test in the winter there. Okay, but, I, but I'm not gonna. But I don't want to. Yeah, but if you unload twenty something cars I, down there, like somebody's gonna 
They're gonna bend them, and you don't want to break them. My ar- my argument is don't go to a track that's on the that's on the calendar because then it's where are you gonna go? Any anywhere that's not on the calendar. Name one. Road Atlanta, you can't go because some guy's gonna no, bend it down. I on the, understand that, that. That track, so what, as much as everyone wants to see somebody run there, go to Coda. They don't run there. Yeah, you could go to Coda. It should go be a Coda. Go to Watkins Glen. They don't run well, there. Well, you can't go to Watkins Glen <laughs> right now. Well, I, like, here, here it is. Go, I, I think Coda Coda would have been Coda would have been better better suggestion. Doesn't legit doesn't going to Indianapolis road course legit? No, because the weather. Yeah, you got to go somewhere where the weather is oh, decent. Oh yeah, okay. Well, all right, we are right, right, still. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know about you. It was uh, below Homestead zero. Road course. It was below zero here. I was thinking Homestead Road Course, but I, I, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't do that. No, I mean, I'd love to see him go to Road Atlanta, but that. F- no, no, no. Oh. I, no, no, no. That's that's. I get or not Lugina doing Road, Road Atlanta. No, they run. Lugina, they, they run. They run. My Lugina. argument Lugina. is, don't go to a track that's on the calendar. On the calendar, you can't go to Sonoma because Sonoma's a snooze fest. Period. Anyways, they're not going to learn anything there. The best track would have been go to Coda. That would have been the best track. I, just, just go, yeah. go there and yeah. learn whatever. I agree. Because you don't, you don't. If you're not doing, I agree. A race and there, they could have televised it. You know, they could have put it on Peacock, streaming with ads. And my, <laughs> my argument, my argument is, don't go to a track that's on the on the schedule. So then that right. way you're not gaining right. any information. And now, there. now everyone's so making everyone's it. Everyone's like, like saying, oh, they're gonna now they now this is a precursor for thermal to do something. I'm like, what are they, what's gonna run there? Like, there is if an IMSA race shows up there, shoot me. It's it, there's no elevation, there's no nothing. It's it's featureless. I'm waiting to see what this like Nashville track is supposed to be. Oh well, there's the, is that the Ozarks one or is this? No, no, no that's the Nashville. The Ozarks it's, it's one's the, supposed to be crazy. It, it's the new. It, well, there's two know, down it's, there. It's some. It's some yeah. uh, new. Well, it's a it's thing. a private club. Yeah. yeah, I mean, supposedly it's it's like barber, but meant for cars. Mm-hmm. I guess the best way to describe it. Yeah. But the Ozark one's supposed to be crazy too. But the problem is, there's like a couple corners on it that are like. Kind of. No, I the, this this, Nash, this Nashville one is supposed to be great, great yeah, two or whatever. Yeah, so. but I'm, I'm like I'm just like you know whatever, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. Anyways, so I mean it was you know was what it was. Get what's the appetite? We go to St. Pete now. Looking yeah. forward is to there, it. Looking forward to I it. I love St. Pete. It's, it's a great. Track. It's a good road course. There's one quirky yeah. little piece to the track. Mm-hmm. Which is that when Which they come mean, down, they come down the straight, the back straight, and then they make the right. And that, they, they the have wall. like three corners of, of single file. Yeah, three, three, outside of that, it's, it's fine. fine. It's a good track. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, you got the front straightaway, which is wide because it's an air direct airline. Yeah. Uh, it's a runway, so that's cool. Yeah. So that that that'll be good. Sean, yeah. which driver got their first win at? St. Petersburg. Graham Ray Hall. Oh, very good, Sean. Yes, yes. Um, it, it, I, I just remembered that it was like an unsponsored car. And- right. Let's um, let's move into the world of Formula One and car launches. Uh, yes. Last week, after the we wrapped up the podcast, um, Red Bull Haas. Oh, Haas launched Haas their the car. First one, first one to drop. At first, yeah. Which I mean, I I kind of like it. Is that the car? What the Haas? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, it's because the Red Bull white. wasn't the Red Bull. They're gonna run. N- none of these teams. Well, they are sh- are, sh- the are that, unveiling a car. Alfa Romeo unveiled the car. They're running. That's what they said. Oh. Well, Fine, yeah. but it's it's. It, I know. I'm just saying. Uh, just, all the, all the all the cars are gonna be different by the end yeah. of the season. I mean, <laughs> you know, we had the Red Bull launch. We had the Red Bull launch in New York. Yeah, I was looking forward Red, to it, Red and Bulls, then it turned into a Red Bull marketing yeah. campaign where I had to like sit through every Red Bull snowboarder, base jumper, whatever. So you'll, sit, you'll sit through that, but you won't sit through the clash. <laughs> My point exactly. I was. Ho- I had it on mute. <laughs> My eyes, <laughs> my eyes would have burned if I watched the clash. Uh-huh. Please, yeah. the fact that they had to stop that race, a thirty-eight mile race, and have a halftime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never. It's you know what you know what the average speed worked out for that race? About three. No, don't say it, please. 
21 miles. 21 miles. 21 miles. Hauling the mail. Hauling the mail. And we had to have and we had to stop at halftime yeah. and have have a show. It, okay. And Sean, what did it sound like going around? Nate. <laughs> Nate. <laughs> Nate. Please. So, um, big news. Ford is back. Yeah. It's exciting. It's a brand. It's it a is. badging exercise. How come Toto's not out there screaming and going, this is bad? Right? Where is he? I, I was probably, waiting on that. I mean, he, it's probably because Toto knows Ford will be out of F1 once they win one. <laughs> a race. Oh, well, is it that, isn't that the case with Stewart? They hung out with... Uh, yeah, no, um, Nate, it, Nate. Jackie Stewart. When Ford for like, gets involved in anything, it, you know, it's, it's always <laughs> like... A little bit. Yeah, it's always with a skeptical eye on my end. I mean, I got sucked into the whole Ford GT program, thought they were going to be around to take on Cadillac. I mean, sorry, Corvette. And three years. They did. Yeah. We're done. Meanwhile, Chevrolet and Corvette keeps this program going for like... We're in like in the 20th year of the thing. I mean, and, yeah. and it's the biggest branding exercise going. I mean, Jesus. So, anyways, so Ford's well, Ford's I mean, going to be here in 2026. Mm-hmm. Exciting! Toto's not pounding his fist on the table, um, or breaking a Bose headphone. I, yeah, I mean, screaming and yelling that either. you know, we, we, Andretti we're, we're, and Cadillac is not sufficient. So, <laughs> anyways, so uh, I I didn't learn anything from the Red Bull car. Nothing. It looks the same. Well, the this is. This is one thing that I, I probably didn't think about is is you're now seeing repercussions from the cost cap, so you, you're not getting an entirely different car. I I will say, but when that I, wasn't the car. They admitted that wasn't the car, which is fine because if they're if they're the team that technically can't spend the most money I, this I, year, I understand that. Then, but the whole thing of these Formula One these car launches and reveals is to put forth your 2023 entry. This wasn't even a 2023 car. Everyone said this was yeah. last year's car, and they put a few bits on it, and that's all they did. Well, you're, where's you're the Ford not, logo? You, the that's, f- they, 2026. That's 2026. It was funny because they're all standing there with know, Honda jackets I know. on. Yeah. Was Jim Farley? Did he <laughs> yeah. have a Honda jacket on his Ford on his Red Bull? No, jacket? I didn't. I didn't see it. But the but this is also the second year of this generation of cars. You're not getting a completely different car. I I understand that. The and purpose of these things is to bring out the car. Bring the car out. But the other point is the car is going to look completely different towards the end of the year. So, I, so some of the differences that they've made, if it's not going to be the same thing at testing, I'm because sh- Mercedes brought a whole different side. Is pod Mercedes going to bring the testing. same? Are they going to bring the car? What, I don't know what they, uh, they're doing. But but during <laughs> testing, their car looked completely different this, from this, what they yeah, launched. We'll get to Mercedes in a second. So it so it to me. I don't really care. You just you take it for what it is, and you see the differences, and you go with it. I didn't. I didn't see any difference in the car. They they so. added, um, they added some strakes and did some work to the uh, what, underbody. What I did learn from the Alfa Romeo one was that, and this could be coming forth with a lot of the cars, is there's going to be a lot less paint on these cars, and it's oh, going yeah. to be the carbon yeah. look, which is fine with me. But yeah, but well, they're struggling to meet meet them minimum minimum weight. weights. Yeah. yeah, so but it you know whatever. I, the other thing with the the one thing I've noticed with these three cars is there's a lot of work to the under tray. Yeah, being done and the packaging of the rear engine cover is uh, a bit wider, wider at the top. It's yeah. it's not as slim. I did notice on the 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 Red Bull it's itself. I I think there was there was a little bit less noticeable done, which I mean I I know you said that it's not the the car that they're that they're going to be racing at pre testing, yep. but but what what I did see was was some fairly minimal physical changes. But I'm sure the way that it's manipulating the air the arrow, yep. it's it's probably doing a lot more. Yeah. Um, Alpha, they their floor design is different. Mm-hmm. They um, they have uh, cut. I mean, I'm I don't I'm not using the correct terminology, but they they have cuts and slits along the edges a lot a lot more than what um, uh, Red Bull and Williams have on theirs. Um, and then the side pod openings on the Alpha 
have extended out pretty wide. Yeah, it does. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at a picture of it right now. It looks like that. And then they've the the venting along the engine cover is different as well um, from last year to this year. Where last year it was kind of one string of of vents, whereas this year it's two. Where you have one that runs across the top of the side pod, and yep. then one that's higher up on the rear engine. The cover. one across the high, high across the um, side pod is running horizontal, over horizontal, and the one coming off the engine cowling is running vertical. It's right It's pretty cool. The, the, What? Sorry, that that conf- that didn't make sense, any sense to me until you showed me the picture. That's that's how they did it. The 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 vertical ones. That's 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 just it's just venting air through, but then ramming it into the radiators which are in there, and then the the engine, the cowling, the ver- vertical s- slashes are just letting the engine heat get out. I think it's good. Yeah. That's that's all. Okay. It's fine. It looks cool. I like it. The only thing I don't like on the car is still. I I don't like. And Nate Nate brought this up last. It was the uh, that flick that goes over the front wheel. The tires are massive. Not I, the, I don't, not the not the t- I, no this. No, I I know the, the, the <laughs> no. The, the he wheel, knows what you're the, talking the about. Sh- the the brake duct shroud, whatever. Yeah, yeah. that shroud. No, I, I mean, no it's but like dumb. But, it, You've you've also increased the tire size. It, I, the, my opinion, these cars are massive. They need to get smaller. Right. I, I don't. And this, I don't and like, this is one of the reasons they said. Like this really is one of the reasons some of the drivers had problems. They said. Yeah. It's, it's they can't see. No. It, that's that's They're the thing. Big. It's like you. Yeah. They don't need to be this massive. Yeah. But you yeah. know the Alpha looks cool. Looks cool. Yeah. I. We'll see how much the Ferrari looks like the Alpha next week. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, thanks to Fred Vassour. I, I have I have He's noticed, French. I have noticed that the the Haas, the Williams, <laughs> his words, and and the He's Alpha to some degree have have um, moved towards Red Bull's kind of side pod design. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the um, the so under, next, under tray of the Haas and the next, Williams are next more week like we the have Bull. like you said we have um, we have literally everyone else. We have Toro Rosso. <laughs> Alpha Tower or whatever they are, um, Sunday, and then we have Aston Martin, McLaren. Who who's last? All right. Hashtag we'll Team LH. Sorry, Alpha Tower is is on the eleventh. That's yeah, that's this Sunday. Saturday. 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 I Saturday. That's all right. <clears throat> the thirteenth is Monday. That's Aston Martin and McLaren that day. Valentine's Day is red for Ferrari. Of course. Mercedes is the day after on the fifteenth. Oh, and, and then we round out on thursday with alpine nice Nice. so so by for the next podcast we'll have everyone but alpine and mercedes and then the one after that we'll see see what else see how things go all right that looks good so yeah it's kind of exciting i think personally but yeah pretty cars yeah we had uh just means we're we're another week closer to the new drive to survive season Right, that's coming on the twenty fifth. I'm excited for that. Is yeah, it? I I'm not I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm I'm gonna watch it. Hopefully, it's not as scripted as last year was. Yeah, I, I mean the first year was fantastic, True. and then yeah, last Gunther. year was just like oh we're doing a docu drama. They tried. Yeah, they tried. Well, yeah. They, well, when they started cutting it, it out, it, people started ripping it apart and then putting up the pieces that they took from five races before and threw it in there. I was like, oh, this sucks. But I, I'm not. Gonna, which I don't which season gonna... are you talking about? Season one, two, three, four. Like that, that's all. Of well, them. how many seasons <laughs> they have so far? I don't know. Four. Five, the, the first five. season was fine because it was new. The, the second this season. Is their fifth the, season. I the think. second season became a little more predictable in the sense. Well, I shouldn't say predictable, but then there were things showing up that didn't get said in races yes. and stuff. So they started people going. They were taking stuff out of context. Yeah. You can't do that. It, each no, no, each then, show should be a segment of races as they happen. And find the drama, or find the te- you know the dramas that the team face. Right. Well, the don't yeah, script cause, it. Cause, well, the the problem is they. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say the problem, but the the way that they've decided to go about this series is they. They already pre-plan every. 
every episode out of who they're going to be with. Right. And what and they basically just cover what happened yeah. on the on the. Well, and that's kind of why Max isn't really a big fan of it. So. Well, but this season he's said or, he or was, last season yeah. he's, he's, now, he's in it. So. One of the things that happened at the IndyCar test and it's been happening since um, even before the test is IndyCar has their crew doing the 100 Days to Indy mm. um, TV show. And, you know, IndyCar has told them that they have unbridled access to everything, and they've told yeah. the teams this, and the teams are starting to get annoyed because the guys are getting in the way, putting microphones in people's faces, which they are, and they're taking up people's time. Mm-hmm. So apparently what the teams did was, and this is awesome, they got together. Some of the team principals got together um, with their media representatives and came up with what they're going to the game plan in which is when they come up and stick the microphone in the face and they're trying to draw out some dumb answer just just give them the i'm really excited about my verizon team penske car we've got a good season ahead of us and just drop it at that so that's kind of what they're doing i these shows like uh, yeah you, you can't you can't be scripting it it's got to be no it's got to be organic it's like you go you know, if a team lets you come in and sit with the mechanics and you, you can stay out of their way while they're working on the car, you can then debrief with the mechanics afterwards and stuff like that. Like, um, do, do like, the, yeah. I mean, Truth in 24. Yeah. See, yes. the problem there is they used NFL films. The guy, the NFL yeah. films production guys, those are the guys to use. Yeah. If they were doing the Drive to Survive series, it would be totally different. And I think the hardcore... Um, Formula One fans, race fans like ourselves, would probably be more into it. Yeah, because you're you're showing it for what it is and not right. You know, drumming up shit. like when it, you know, just you, you know where I'm going with this because they went. They, there was certain things that they did, like when they went with um, Uli Baretzi, the engine guy. Mm-hmm. You know, they had Tom Christensen talking mm-hmm. about how he's like a psycho. The guy's mad scientist. You know, yeah. and then they were talking about how he goes to this perch, and they went with him. Mm-hmm. And things like that, but it's like there was no, you know, the the drama was you know taken from the show and it was done really well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like when they had the rain and right in one of the races and right. They, then they, they f- dealt with um, they like f- Rockefeller's accident, yeah. you know, things like that. It's um, a, you know, it's pretty. I how they how NFL films does stuff is really high high quality. What they're getting from the indie thing is it's going to be great, but I mean it's going to be good, but they're starting to get in people's way, and that's that's when it starts to be a yeah. a problem, you know. And I'm not so sure. Like I want to see Alexander Rossi's bachelor party because apparently that's one of the things they shot. I don't really see why that's relevant. All right. Yeah, I, you I know. Don't. I, f- I feel like I know more about Rossi from from off from the off the off track. track. Yeah, it's like, off it, track. Like it's yeah. it's not a- actually <laughs> like Connor Daly's on his 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 um his podcast. Bus Boys. Oh yeah, the Bus Boys one. <laughs> Did we just? I thought I lost some. Anyways, yeah, Bus Boys was great. They had yeah. a, they had Jordan Taylor, sports car for life. <laughs> there, that was and, a good and, one. And Rodney Sandstorm. Rodney Sandstorm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two. People. So yeah, it was it was good. They they do a good job, but like I'd rather see stuff like that, that homemade stuff. Yeah, or like you know a season with Ed Carpenter racing. I'd rather see that. That's what I'd rather see. Yeah, you know I don't want to see some contrived thing. You know it's like, you know it's the season opens at Thermal Club with testing. You know you know it's gonna be that. Yeah, it's just gonna be something dumb like that. You know. <laughs> so. Anyways, we'll see what happens. So um, we had a uh, little sports car news today. We had, um, well, actually two things over the last couple of days. One is um, Juan Montoya, Sebastian Montoya, and Henrik Hedman will be leading up the Dragon Speed car in European Le Mans series. And uh, young Sebastian is now a Red Bull driver. You do know that. Oh, part of the program. He is part of the program. All right. I believe he's going to f3 this year yeah for him so he's gonna be doing elms and f3 cool so that was cool and um one of the cooler things that came up and this was i i caught this over um well i was kind of watching bathurst over the weekend uh the the joda team uh Mm -hmm. who's gonna be running one of the customer porsches 
in WAC um, once they get their car available. Uh, be a two car team, but they're going to get one car first. Uh, Dieter Gatz, and that guy is used to be the head of part of the head of one of the the racing program for Audi. So there was Dr. Ulrich. Mm. Um, then you had the the engineering squad that was mm-hmm. um, those guys, um, and you had um, um, the guys from Yoast, uh, Ralph Ralph Kuttner. Mm-hmm. and then um, but Dieter Gatz was in there as well, and he he ran some of the prototype program, but he also ran the DTM program and the sports car program. Mm-hmm. So he's coming over to run the Jota Sports Porsche program. So that's, right. that's a pretty yeah. pretty cool thing. So kind of like that. Um, and then. Um, Nate, 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 um, yeah, you get some just difficult news. Kyle Bush was apprehended in Mexico. Well, with a concealed weapon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nate, um, and, according, and, and now, according to uh, the charges against him, he had a, a weapon which is not allowed to be had in Mexico, concealed, um, did not declare it. Um, he was fined, um, 10,000 pesos or a thousand bucks. Um, and, um, he could face up to uh, three to six months in a Mexican jail. That should be entertaining. Maybe, maybe you know, they could NASCAR today could follow him to the Mexican jail. We all know what's going to happen. Right. He'll probably pay another, you know, five hundred thousand bucks, and I'll never bring a gun again into Mexico. Anyways, right. which I mean, so, right? He and he, he's now we know. Now, now, now we know that Kyle Bush is a gun lover. Yeah. There you okay. go. There you go. Who wants to go hunting? Huh? Who wants to go hunting? With a thirty-eight? No, not a thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Oh. You're not the only thing you're shooting is a is a person. No, I'm just. I'm not advocating. <sighs> I'm not advocating shooting a person. I'm not. Yeah, a gu- yeah, I'm don't not, condone yeah, this, but I'm, not, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I. So um, I, this just, I personally have never gone hunting, but I know I would. We have some breaking news, breaking, 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 breaking news. Live? As of twenty minutes ago, what happened? Um, the Las Vegas uh, Clark County County Commission has granted permission uh, for Formula One to race on the Strip until twenty thirty two. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> That's a long <laughs> ass time. Wow. That's a decade, right? Oh, God. That... It's nine years. <laughs> Ricardo's got to find a ride. Look at that. We broke it. You know, we didn't break it. Chris Medlin broke it. Yeah. But, but it came up on my feed. So Jeez. that's cool. Well, we know we'll be there. <laughs> Somehow, if we can get out of Miami, we'll be all set. Yeah. Which I mean. Replace it with like Watkins Glen or Road. We've discussed that. Uh, Road America. I know, I know, I know, I know. To to be honest, the I I don't think the track is that bad. Apart from the one odd chicane, which I think. Oh yeah. I think if you and and the only reason they did that because I watched watched a video on it is the the high speed, the speed, and the potential for hitting the wall. No, it. They they go under, under yeah, an overpass, yeah. so you to when you're racing or whatever the law is, you have to be a certain speed under when going under gotcha. something like that. So if they just designed the track where you just slow down, and I know it would be that slow kind of chicane or whatever, but you could basically just have it going high speed into it, and then yeah. you know do the kind of like right. ha, like how Jetta's uh, turn one and two are, right? Um, where it's it, you basically it turns back in on itself and yeah. then goes forward. Yeah. Where I, I think that would be a little bit better and yeah, give you right. a little bit longer straight, right. other than this this crappy little like yeah. so. triple apex thing. Anyways. But it, it's it's more it's more so the. <laughs> It, it's the crowd that goes to Miami and and what they've what they've uh, yeah it's gonna be worse at Vegas what too. they've marked it as yeah and that's that's the that's the piece I don't really yeah. I'm I'm gonna watch the race and the racing activities yeah um I'm not I think the any of that pre-race grid gridwalk crap I don't want to watch it yeah no I I don't 
I, I just I just want the race. I don't want yeah, any. I don't. If we can just if we can just like keep the butt smooch and the celebrities to a, an absolute zero, yeah. it'd be fantastic. And let's focus on the racing. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. This is bad. NASCAR is needs bad to learn that too. Well, they they need to get out of LA for sure. They yeah. need to go back to Daytona for the shootout because I tell you what, I was on YouTube and I was watching the last. Uh, Last six laps of the uh, 2004 Bud shootout. That was cool. Bill Jarrett won. Good times, man. They need to go back to Daytona. There's there's preseason thunder that's missing, but the actual clash is mi- missing. It, NASCAR spent a whole two months at, in Daytona, and now it's just let's make not even a week out of it. It's stupid. And on that bombshell. And on that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> really stupid. I mean, I, I don't know. Hey, hey, you know, that's just my thing. But. Nate, sometime you'll you'll decide that you're going to come over the pit wall to Christian and I's position on that. <laughs> we're we're okay. We're, we're, we'll watch the NASCAR road courses because the um the stage racing is gone. Yeah, actually, yeah, we, yeah, we didn't, I, I don't think I don't think we mentioned that. We did. No, we, we talked didn't. about it last week. We did. Yeah, we did, we did. talk about it. Okay, but so, what we didn't uh, talk about this okay. week, and we need to just talk real quick about this. Uh, your thoughts on the Indianapolis 500 dropping double points? I'm happy by fine. it. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with yeah, it. Fine. I don't know why we had double points. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, I, I, I never understood. How about that. how about they double the prize purse? <laughs> like that's that would be better. more. Uh, that's more. Let's up, let's up the ante on it. You know, seriously, four million. Who wants it? Yeah. How much is it? To, does does winning it secure funds to run all of next all of the following season? Yeah, well, so like a guy like a guy comes in and runs like a Matty Bravin comes in and runs the you know he if unless he f- wins the race or finishes in the top wherever the, for for what the five hundred top ten five hundred yeah for the five hundred five hundred so let's just say he finishes oh I'm twentieth back I'm right sorry I I was I thought you meant the the end of the season oh pri- no I'm prize talking money. the race the prize race, money. race prize that's money. that's what I sorry. if you make that three million to win I got you imagine that. Oh, okay. fantastic! Sure. Um, those, yeah. I mean, you know, you got to figure out. He's running for prize money, so mm-hmm. he's, which means he's running for X amount of the prize money that he wins, and the rest goes to the team. Mm. That still doesn't. That might cover the race day cost, but not the whole month. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know, but I'm I'm kind of glad the points are gone. That, that just because somebody gets. Gets lucky there, and then they they suck the rest yeah. of the year, and they're still hanging around the points. So, <laughs> what like Marcus Erickson, Scott Dixon? Yeah, but well, the years Scott when the, got the years at no, the end. well, he got hosed. But the years that he's finished highly there, whatever. Right. It's just added to his points tally. You know, it's just right. it it creates like it artificially inflates the. It's it's like double points at the last, and it's and it's a race where anything can happen. And you can drop out. You know, it's not your fault. You know, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't really. I mean, any race is like that, so it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be double points. That's I guess so glad glad they dropped that. So that was good news. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so um, I think we can wrap it up there. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk to everyone next week. And uh, Nate, thanks for the insight on the clash. Of course. All right. Anytime. Okay. Good night. Thank you guys for listening to the Redness Podcast, hosted by Christian Abbott, Sean Abbott, and Nathan Lavin. It's produced by Christian Abbott, and music is by Alex Wart and Harrison Taylor.